Howdy, it's Kyle talking about the Ogallala Aquifer. It's one of the largest aquifers in the world and a very important source of water for one of the most agriculturally productive regions in the country. And it's being depleted at a much faster rate than it's being replenished. But despite the importance of the aquifer and the fact that it's being depleted so rapidly, it's not something we hear about very often. I get the impression that other than geologists, hydrologists, and the farmers on the high plains themselves, people aren't really aware about the issues associated with this aquifer. So in this video, I want to talk about some of the challenges associated with it, what the future might hold for the aquifer, and what some of the possible solutions might be to alleviate the problem. First, I want to talk about what an aquifer is in general. It's not an underground lake or river, but underground layers of rock, usually sedimentary rock, that contains water. Water is more easily extracted from rock of higher permeability, and so we can often drain wells to gain access to this water, or if the water reaches the surface on its own, it's a spring. There are different sizes of sediment that determines the amount of permeability in the rock. So you have smaller particles like clay, a little bit larger is silt, larger than that sand, and larger than that gravel. So if you pour water on clay, it's going to basically run off as clay is not very porous. If you pour water on sand, it's going to seep through much more easily, or on gravel, very easily. This map shows the Ogallala Aquifer, which is the largest aquifer in the U.S., and it lies underneath portions of eight states. The largest part of the aquifer is located in the northern end, mostly in Nebraska, and if you're familiar with this part of the state, it's known as the Nebraska Sandhills. So now I want to talk about some of the stats of the Ogallala Aquifer, which is sometimes referred to as the High Plains Aquifer. The U.S. Geological Survey estimates that there were about 978 trillion gallons of water in this aquifer, and it's being depleted rather rapidly. Six trillion gallons were depleted in the year 2010 alone, and on average the aquifer dropped 12 inches in the year 2021, and only one inch was replenished. So that can mean up to a foot of water being depleted each year, and there have been 14 feet of water depleted in the past 25 years. The portions of the aquifer in western Kansas are the parts that have seen the most depletion. Kansas alone had a two-foot drop in the aquifer in the year 2021 alone. In just the first decade of the 2000s, the amount of depletion was the same as about one-third of total depletion in the entire 20th century. Now I want to go into a little bit of detail about the Kansas portion of the aquifer. Approximately 75% of all of the water use in the entire state is from the Ogallala Aquifer. And this is mostly in the form of agricultural use. Kansas is the number one state in the country for wheat production. And it's also number three in terms of cattle. The Kansas portion of the aquifer is already 30% dry. And at the rate of usage right now, 70% will be dry by 2060. The population of Kansas is not growing very quickly, however, the population of the U.S. is growing and Kansas will continue to need to feed the country with its wheat and beef. Now I want to talk about the Texas portion of the aquifer because the Texas population is growing a lot. As of right now, the depletion rate in the Texas portion is not anywhere near as high as Kansas, but again, the need for the water is going to increase a lot more in the coming years. Another aquifer in the state is the Edwards Aquifer, which is the main water source for the San Antonio and Austin metro areas. Currently, the aquifer has as much recharge as use, but that's going to change in the very near future. So as the population of this area continues to grow a lot, it will not be able to rely on the Ogallala Aquifer for supplementing it. And in the same way, farmers in West Texas will not be able to rely on the Edwards Aquifer to supplement their water. Nebraska has the largest portion of the Ogallala Aquifer, but it is also starting to deplete as well. Nebraska wants more access to Colorado's water, and we might see a political fight in the near future. And as you can imagine, the narrative in the Nebraska media is much different than the one in the Colorado media. This reminds me of a lot of something that happened here 10 years ago when Georgia wanted to sue Tennessee for access to the Tennessee River for its water needs. So we'll have to see how this plays out, but the water wars between Nebraska and Colorado have basically already started. The current use of the aquifer is unsustainable, so there will have to be solutions to help ease this problem. But it's very difficult to drum up public interest and support for needing to improve the situation in the Ogallala Aquifer because people don't see aquifer depletion as a stark reminder like they do with low reservoir levels. 
So when the media show these pictures of really dry reservoirs drying up, that looks really scary because it is, but you can't really show the same type footage for an aquifer. Out of sight, out of mind. So now I want to get into some of the ideas that have been proposed to help alleviate the situation in the aquifer. The first is conservation. And although the farmers in the high plains can use better irrigation techniques, that's not the long-term solution. So say we reduce water usage of the aquifer by 15%, but the population increases by 20%. So although Kansas and Nebraska themselves might not see the big population growth, growth in the rest of the country will increase demand for what they grow. And just to give you an idea of how important the agriculture is in this part of the country, 20% of all of the wheat, corn, cotton, and cattle in the U.S. is dependent on the Ogallala Aquifer. With Texas, Nebraska, and Kansas being 1, 2, 3 in cattle, and cattle drink more water than us. And conservation can only go so far because the conditions in the West are getting drier and drier, droughts are becoming more common and more extreme. Now each of these maps is for just a single month of a year, so not the entire year was dry like this, but droughts are increasing. Another idea that's been mentioned is simply change the crops that farmers are growing to ones that use less water. But this is simply not feasible. We can't reduce demand for wheat or cotton because we're not growing as much of it. And another idea floating around is just eat less beef. And yes, livestock, especially cattle, have a negative impact on the environment. But my take on it is that humans are omnivores. We're supposed to eat meat. We weren't born with incisors because we were supposed to be vegans. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, but I also eat things that were once alive. And so do a good majority of the rest of Americans. And you look at the Texas economy, it's based on dinosaurs in the ground and cows on the surface. So if current use is unsustainable and some of these major lifestyle changes are unlikely, then what can we do? I'm no engineer or hydrologist, but I can't see how this situation gets rectified without water diversion. And in terms of diversion, there are three potential major sources for it. One might be the ocean, or really the Gulf of Mexico, and it requires an extremely expensive and extremely complicated process, and this will be on top of a large aqueduct being needed to transfer the water from the Gulf to the High Plains. Ocean water is definitely the answer to the water problems in California, Arizona, and Nevada, but I don't think it's just feasible for the High Plains. So another potential source would be the Mississippi River. And something along this river system could be both water for the high plains, but also flood control for the eastern plains. If water from the Mississippi River during flood stage was diverted to other areas, it would allow more water to flow from the areas that are flooding upstream. From an engineering or hydrology standpoint, I'm not sure how feasible this would be, but it's something that should at least be looked at. And a potential third source of water right here. And I know every time something like this gets brought up, people in these states shiver. I spend a fair amount of time up in Michigan, and I've heard people talking about this from time to time, and the response is usually, it's our water, you can't have it. You're going to dry these things up like the Aral Sea, which is an ecological disaster in Central Asia. However, I counter with the fact that the Great Lakes are some of the largest lakes in the world, and they're a national treasure, not the property of some states or provinces. My take on it is that these states have been feeding you for all these years. You can quench their thirst. We're all one big country, one big system. And yes, I'm from a very dry part of the country dependent on agriculture, so I have a little more sympathy for some of these high plains farmers, but these guys are really important for the overall country's food supply. I also don't want to come off sounding like I'm saying just drain the Great Lakes and give all the water to the farmers, but I do think an important part of the solution is going to be water diversion, whether it be from the Mississippi River system in preparation of or response to a flooding event. So maybe have large amounts of water in reservoirs in Nebraska or Kansas that otherwise would have been flood water doing damage upstream and also having water diverted from the Great Lakes. So a combination of conservation and diversion, I think is going to be the only really way to solve the issues along the Oglala Aquifer because I ain't going vegetarian. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up to let me know you approve and subscribe to this channel if you're interested in learning more about geography. I'm talking about cities and states and ranking them in all kinds of different categories, talking about cross-country road tripping and everything I do comes from a little more nerdy type perspective. But yeah, thanks for watching. Geography King, signing out.